Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, my web warriors. It's your boy, Mr. Degenerate, back at it again for another video. And ooh, we, we have made it one year later. It is finally the anniversary of Spider Man 2. And oh boy, oh man, you can ask any of my friends my mother anybody how fucking hype i was for spider-man 2 like words cannot describe when that initial trailer hit for spider-man 2 and we got our first glimpse of venom i lost my shit i remember just where i was who i was watching it with and man it was magical and the lead up to spider-man 2 was phenomenal like every single day when we finally got new information after that a little hiatus man i was trying to cover everything when we got our first gameplay and i did my final overview of the game which went into full detail about what was going to be in the game and what could you expect in spider-man 2 i was so excited for that game I, I got so excited for that game i even bought the fucking face plates the controllers i had two at the time i only had the one and i still use up to this day and overall you know i even bought the collector's edition for not only myself but one from one of my best friends and again spider-man 2 was hype and i even did a review of it you can go check it out and i remember saying in that review that spider-man 2 was phenomenal like I really, really enjoyed it, and I looked on it with such happiness to the point where I gave it Game of the Year, and I still stand by giving it Game of the Year. But over time, and especially after I beat it the, fir the first time, there was always this little nagging feeling I had like something's not quite right with this game. And I always felt that way. And I could never put my finger on it. What was wrong? Like, I remember just beating the game. And it wasn't like Spider-Man 1 or Miles Morales. Where it was like, I like, applaud. And I was like, like, even for the first Spider-Man game, it was almost like a tears of joy moment. It was like, fuck yeah. Like, they fucking nailed it. This one felt like, wow, that was fucking awesome. But, hmm, something's, but, something's not right. Like, and I couldn't put my finger on it, but over the years, after interacting with some web warriors, after thinking about the game multiple times, and now replaying the game on New K Plus recently, getting prepared for the anniversary of the game, I have to come to the realization of Spider-Man 2 that Spider-Man 2, while it's an amazing game, and I still hold it as a true great example of what a comic book video game or licensed video game should be ultimately there are some things that hold it back from being great when i talk about spider-man 2 i always say that it's an amazing game but it's just so close to greatness you could feel it as you play it that there's something missing there are things missing at it in the game that stops it from reaching that overarching greatness. So in this video, and this is probably gonna be a long video, I would like to go over all, and I repeat, all of the things that personally I didn't like about Spider-Man 2. There will be timestamps in the description box below. And also, I will say, if you did not watch my original review, a link will be in the description box below because I still stand by a lot of what I said in that video and some of the things I like about that video. So to get this long introductory out, uh, here's some of my issues with Spider-Man 2. So to kick things off, I'm going to talk about the story. Now, for me personally, I don't really have a problem with the story. In fact, I actually think the story is pretty good. It's a little messy, but for the most part, it's pretty a good Spider-Man tale. Um, I think the things that I took away from the story that really was really good was basically the two um, themes of the game, which is uh, the balance, finding the balance in things, 
but also uh, more importantly, something that I don't think a lot of Spider-Man media talks about is second chances and how Spider-Man and in particular Craven challenged the Spider-Man's ideology of uh, second chances. I thought that was really good and I really loved that aspect of the game and I love that Insomniac actually brought that up. Not a lot of Spider-Man writers and whatnot or even in the live action shows and whatnot talks about spider-man's like no kill rule or even like why he believes it's second chances i thought that was really fucking cool uh however i think where the story fell apart for me is in the third act and i say this as someone who really loves web of shadows this move this this game tries to take web of shadows and kind of doesn't do it any better and I think my greatest critique is Venom. This interpretation of Venom is, ugh. I'm not gonna go as far as, as be like the rest of the Venom community and say he's the worst interpretation, but I just kind of have a like a question mark on top of my head, almost like I'm fucking like in uh, Metal Gear Solid, like, hmm? Like, I don't know what they were quite thinking with this interpretation of Venom. Now, here's the thing. I don't even mind that he's Harry. In fact, that's a genius fucking idea. When I heard that Venom was going to be Harry, or it was teased in the first and in Miles Morales games, I was like, that's a fucking genius idea. You have a best friend of Peter who has this father that doesn't give a fuck about him, or is kind of like absent and not really being there like in the comic books and i was like that's actually kind of profound and i was like having the symbiote on there would be fucking awesome however this interpretation of norman osborne is more of well he's just an asshole to everybody else but he loves his he actually cares about his family so i was kind of like I wonder how they're going to turn that around. And there's one scene that almost does it. And I was like, oh, wow. It was a scene where a Norman is talking to Peter, black suit Peter. And he's like hugging him. And Harry sees that. And he's like, what the fuck? Like, it's almost like he's jealous of Peter. And I was like, oh, wow, that's actually cool. But then when you get into the game or when you get actual Venom, they don't really dive into that. In fact, most of the time, Venom just comes off as a one note, I'm going to rule the world type of villain. And for me, I found that really, really, really annoying because Venom is so much more than that. You know, he's had so many different interpretations. He's been like the silly type of character. But one thing I always loved about Venom is his growth as a character. And considering the theme is about second chances, you know, this could have been really, really a cool and subtle way of showing that even an alien deserves a second chance. Uh, and I say this because they almost did it. There's a few scenes where Venom gets upset every time someone calls him a thing or you need to take that thing off of you, Harry, and Venom always gets upset at that and i was like oh that's showing a little humanity and you see that all the time in the in the in the venom comics especially the recent uh venom comic books that this game clearly takes uh, influence from because they reference this uh, uh, so much times in in this game i was kind of shocked that they took reference from that book, but they decided to base the Venom off of another Spider-Man story, one of my favorite uh, Spider-Man stories, which is uh, Spider-Man um, Spider Shadow, uh, which is like a what if Peter kept the black suit. I was just kind of like, that's a cool interpretation of Venom, and you could do a lot with the drug abuse aspect of that, but I was kind of like, what the fuck? I was like, I, I was kind of annoyed because it's, it's it's clearly there. The ideas are there, you know. I really, really was hoping it would have leaned into it, like, or just dive more deep into the Venom. 
but we just don't spend enough time with this Venom. And it's a shame because he looks cool. Like, his design looks fucking awesome. I kind of wish the Tom Hardy fucking Venom looked like this. Uh, he's a fucking giant. You get one sequence where you get to play as him, which is fucking awesome and was shocking. And more importantly, uh, Tony Todd uh, it is fucking killing it as the voice of Venom. Every time he talks, he sounds so fucking menacing and fucking awesome. And I just wish we had gotten more of this Venom. Really flesh him out. and Or have more reasons why Harry would want to use the black suit. Um, use Venom. Because right now, it just sounds confusing every time. I'm like, does Harry even believe in the symbiote and what Venom is saying? Because sometimes in the game, it doesn't even sound like Harry is in full control. And I just wish that they both had the similar type of interest. Like, oh, you want to heal the world. Let's use the symbiote to heal the world. And I want to heal the world because that's my duty. That's my mission. And again, the game kind of plays with that. With every character that gets the symbiote. When MJ gets the symbiote, she starts lashing out on Peter. And basically saying some shit that she always had on her mind. And then when Peter gets the black suit, he goes fucking buck wild. And starts saying and doing shit that's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and... You find out the reason why he feels that way is because he generally wants to protect MJ and Aunt May and he failed at that. So again, there's cool ideas with the black suit, but when it comes on to Venom, he just seems very, very one note half of the time. Even though I get what they're going with. This interpretation, I think what would have helped this interpretation of Venom way more is if they had no come in and venom be like an agent of noel and then through spending time with humans and peter and harry he realized kind of like his error of his ways i think that would have fit more than what we originally got because overall this venom ugh, i don't i can't support this venom despite how cool he is Another complaint I have with this game story would have to be Miles Morales. Now, I love me Miles. I've really grown to really like Miles, not only from the animated movie into the Spider-Verse, but also Insomniac's take of Miles. Even though this man needs some black writers in the room because sometimes he can come off a little bland. I think Miles is a really cool and fun character. And it's good to have like two Spider-Man handling a situation when the fucking game allows it to happen. <laughs> and that's actually my biggest criticism. Is that half for the most majority of the time, Miles feels like an afterthought to this story. Um, he does not kind of contribute all too much at least for the first two acts of the game for the most part he's relegated to let's assign the gamers the side quests he's just there to give you side quests and it's kind of annoying because miles has come so far as a character and i really enjoy the character a lot and to see him just relegated to side quests is kind of fucking annoying <laughs> and i think there's so much more you can do with miles you know in this game i would have loved it if there was so many scenes where peter tells miles i got this i can handle this and miles just randomly just like in the open world will pull up and save and help peter out because he's his own man and also this mission is important to him because Martin Lee's fucking disappearing and it's out and he's gonna have an issue with that. I think that's fucking awesome. Um, so for the game and not to capitalize on that really hurt. It also doesn't help that him and Harry have no relationship. There's not even like a rivalry like, hey, like, like, I see that you're good at the Spider-Man stuff and whatnot 
or Peter feeling or Miles feeling jealousy over Harry for taking up so much of Peter's time. Uh, I, I really, really, really can't stress how much Miles feels like an afterthought in this game. Um, there's even one segment, and I talked about it in my video before, it's like one boss battle with Venom that had me scratching my head when Venom says, like, you took Peter away from us. And I'm like, first of all, are you talking about the symbiote or are you talking about Harry? Because if we talk about the symbiote, okay, that, that line makes sense. But if you're talking about Harry, I'm like, Harry, you barely interacted with with fucking miles and when you did you were mad friendly there was no like anger or like jealousy nothing like so again i, I just don't get where they were going with with miles uh i think he's fun to play as i think his side quests some of the side quests you do with miles is really interesting and cool i love the mysterio one but man, fuck me. Miles feels like an afterthought. And don't even get me started on the final suit he gets. Like, my God, you want to know why that suit is so fucking, like, I hate that suit? It's really because it really felt like it wasn't earned. Like, the anti-venom suit felt earned because Peter, you know, was struggling with what happened to him at the end of you know the first game and you know that makes sense and throughout the whole of the of the second game you get get glimpse that he's really struggling with the idea that Aunt May is gone and so you know when he overcomes that demon thanks to miles you know he gets a power boost cool and it's basically him making peace or semi making peace with Aunt May's death but Miles I just didn't I just felt like the suit wasn't earned like he's like this is a one to one Miles original and I'm like motherfucker wasn't the original suit the classic suit that you was wearing wasn't that a one to one Miles original I mean, Yankee literally said, you always compared yourself to the to the other Spider-Man. How about you do things your way? And that's why you made the suit, and that felt earned, because it's you basically saying, no, I'm my own Spider-Man. Even though I'm taking up the mantle, I'm going to do things my way. I, I just didn't get this, this fucking shit at all. Moving on from the story part... I do want to talk about side quests, and I gotta say, uh, I thought the side quests in the first game, and even in Miles Morales, was handled a little slightly better in, in those games than in this game. I think my greatest issue with the side quests in this game is that they're just inconsistent in terms of quality. Now, I know Brian Azahara, the game director, said that he really wanted to keep the MJ and uh, Haley side quests, uh, or the, those missions in particular. And I love the idea, or I think it's kind of cute, that the Spider-Man, the Spider-Man's girlfriends, the girlfriends of our particular heroes, all have a role in the game. I think that's kind of cute. I think that's kind of fun. But I really noticed the problem with some of these side quests. The quality level is really, 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 really inconsistent. Um, and I'm just going to point out that Haley side quest on the first playthrough is really cool, really fun, and it's very short. However, on the second playthrough, when you're missing a lot of content and there's not a lot of side quests or fascinating side quests, I just look at her side quest and I'm kind of like, eh, this, this, this could have either been cut or if we're going to keep this, you got to add more side quest, side quest that's actually fun and engaging. Cause so far I was kind of like, bro, like I was like, huh, I was very frustrated on my second playthrough with some of the side quests. Some of like the, the, some of the side quests are like really cool and very emotional. Like the old, the old man with, 
dementia that was fucking awesome like that side quest made me tear up um the fucking bird side quest with the music playing in the background and you're flying beautiful side quest and then there's this side quest and i'm just kind of like what the fuck is this insomnia <laughs> i'm just like the fucking um life foundation or like the the parker foundation the little science shit that you had to do in the game the may foundation i should say that whole shit those missions are inconsistent shooting bees out the sky is fun and whatnot you know having to use your your web wings to like to like reach a certain altitude to shoot out some air toxins is cool and there's even one that's like even more cool where it's like it tries to do like a last of us like upgrade system whereas like peter's like like messing around with with uh a puzzle and then an enemy attacks that's kind of cool that's fun that's interesting but then there's just some like the puzzles like some of those puzzles are so fucking lame like when you have to splice certain genes together it's uh i was like come on i was like no no so halfway through i just started skipping them shits on my second playthrough because i just could not be bothered i was just so tired of the bullshit with those side quests you know say what you want about screwball but at least with those challenges they required you to do different things and especially some of them required you to use stealth and take down your opponents in stealth mode only you know so again there was variations like what happened to the taskmaster um type side quest where you have to do certain things at a certain amount of time or take down this opponent this particular way um again i wish there was more variety you know you you look at the arkham games and you go to those challenge maps a lot of those challenge maps have certain requirements depending on what character you were playing has different requirements for you to beat them and they're cool and they teach you new mechanics of the game that you didn't even fucking know like up to this day i still get blown away with some of the shit i see for arkham um the arkham games uh stealth shit but even when I played it for the first time, it was fucking awesome to find out that you can actually use your line walk, line, line gun and use it into a window. And if an enemy is by the window, it you can instantly KO them. That's fucking awesome. And I wish Spider-Man would have shit like that. It was in the previous games, especially the first Spider-Man game, and it seemed like they took it out. And I'm just very annoyed by that. And I just wish that the that the side quests were more engaging and really more fleshed out. I also think a big missed opportunity was having the Spider-Mans have side quests where they work together. Like the only time you see these guys work together in a situation is the beginning of the game and in the mid or, or the ending, the third act of the game. There's no side quest that requires both peter and miles to have to tag team up there's only side quests where exclusive to peter exclusive to miles or you can use either one at a particular side quest and it's just kind of like that's weird i'm like that's weird there's tons of side quests i can think of or just what i've been really cool to have miles participate or peter participate in it and I just am disappointed that nobody in Insomnia thought about that idea. Again, this is a this is a game about two Spider-Man. This is something never been done before in a Spider-Man game where two Spider-Mans in the same universe get to bounce off of each other. And I think that's a really golden missed opportunity. And I thought that's what we were gonna do when I originally thought of the game, but they didn't do that and i'm kind of like well that's lame now moving on to the main meat the main juice the gameplay now i gotta be honest i really love the gameplay so i don't have much and a lot of this stuff is gonna come off nick play but the first big complaint i have of the gameplay 
is really the stealth and i said this in my original video but i was very 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 disappointed that they didn't do anything to upgrade the stealth and that's extremely weird considering the fact that in miles morales we even got new enemy types like when you go invisible in miles morales there's certain enemy types that have their uh, goggles that can see miles that was cool i thought that was a great way to add to the combat slash stealth um adding different enemy variety and it's so weird because in this game they added so much variety in terms of enemies in terms of like what you could do with the combat system but it didn't give that same energy to the stealth and that's very very disappointing um and it's weird because brian is in interviews even knows that it's kind of weird so i I don't understand how, you know, the only thing he thought Spider-Man fans would have been cool with is just the line, web line attachment, which is a cool idea. But again, it, it doesn't make sense that we only have one new stealth add-on. In fact, I would... I would honestly say this stealth is a downgrade considering the fact that they even remove gadgets and this kind of brings me back into kind of like my my sort of critique sort of nitpick which is removal of gadgets in particular suit gadgets um I really 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 love really really love the suit gadgets in the first spider-man game I thought it made everyone Spider-Man unique and different in their own unique way. And it was really kind of cool. And I really appreciated that. However, I really, 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 really thought in the second game, they were going to up the ante on, on the suit. But given the fact that the DLC costumes in the first game and even Miles Morales didn't have it, it's very disappointing that they didn't continue that. You know, when I played the Ratchet games, Rat, um, the Ratchet games and Ratchet and Clank games really have a lot of arsenal and a lot of cool gimmick weapons that made them really cool. You know, seeing the expansion um, Matrix um, gadget was so weird, but I was like, that's fucking awesome that they gave him that. That's such an insomniac thing. That's they're putting their own stamp onto it. Does it make sense lore wise? Fuck no. But who cares? You're not playing this shit for lore. You're playing this to play fucking Spider-Man. And all his gadgets for the most part fit his arsenal. So to remove some of those gadgets. I didn't complain at the time. Because it really didn't really bother me. But what still bothers me up to this day. Is that they they did not have suit modifiers. That's crazy to me considering there's so many different suits in this game. You mean to tell me that you couldn't have had like fun little Easter eggs that nod to the other Marvel Cinematic um, Universe or anything like that from the comic books or anything? You literally have the Falcon um, suit. You mean to tell me we couldn't have like Red Wing? like shooting webs at enemies replacing um the spider bots that would have been a cool idea or when miles has the wakanda uh suit the black panther suit wouldn't it be cool if the germalage just came out of nowhere and just starts attacking your enemies like those were the coolest aspects of the la of the first game the first game even had suit modifiers that were absolutely kind of useless like the taunt there's one that taunts but it's cool but what made it cool was that you know it was just yuri longthal just shooting the shit with different jokes at all the enemy and there's new ones for all single enemy types and i was like that's fucking genius and the cool thing is if you have you ever played like a, a character action game you all know when you do a taunt it it aggravates the enemies and so they attack you you could get a perfect dodge i'm like that's incredible that's stuff that should have never been taken out of the game again there's so many different ideas they could have came up with and i'm just disappointed that we didn't get more of that stuff and to see that it kind of hurt the 
stealth in a way by taking away gadgets like um, the, the line mine really hurt the stealth aspect of the game. So again, I think this is one time where taking away stuff was the wrong thing. They should have added or nerfed things to make it better. Another issue I have with the gameplay would probably also be uh, the combat. While I really love the combat and I really think it's really dope, it would have been nice if we had uh, double takedowns. Um, it's really kind of weird how like the Arkham games have like double uh, takedowns or like triple uh, triple counters. And this is the sequel, and we could do so much with Spider-Man. He's the most athletic uh, superhero who can do flips and dips and shoots webs at any angle and whatnot. To see that they didn't add it, or at least they were going to add it, but they cut it, was really, really, really sad. I think my also complaint I would have about the combat, and this one really disappointed me, and this once again ties back to the whole Miles not having much to do in the game is not having the ability to switch in between the Spider-Mans in mid combat or even in takedowns. Uh, I think that would have been a really cool idea that if you do a takedown, if you hold the button or hold a, a particular button, you can switch into miles or, you know, when you uh, are doing just any combat, you can switch into Miles anytime. You know, say whatever you want about Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight allows you to switch in mid combo and mid uh, takedowns to either Nightwing or whoever Batman is teaming up with in the mission. I thought that was genius. I thought it was cool. And to see that they didn't take that when a game is literally called Spider Man 2, it's really kind of disappointing. And you know, but that being said, I do want to say I really enjoyed the combat. I really think the combat is really cool. Isn't it a Web of Shadows level of combat? Um, but one aspect I will give the combat a lot of credit is that it, it does push your shit in, especially in boss battles. Like I really realized, especially on playing the, on the hardest, hardest difficulty, I think it's Ultimate, that the enemies will swarm you a lot faster and more importantly especially when you get up to the symbiotes those motherfuckers take a while to 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 take now which i actually think is a genius idea because they're symbiotes they should be strong as fuck uh even spider-man should have a little bit of a struggle fighting them so i really appreciate that however those little aspects of it just really hurt the combat a little bit it's still a fun combat system but it's just those little things would have just made it like oof also again i can't believe i'm gonna say this again but it's kind of crazy to me that a, a game like web of shadows that came out years ago uh and it's not even the perfect spider-man game but i really love uh has uh destructible environments even in free roaming and this game that is a fucking uh what 2023 game uh with modern technology can't do that is really weird now don't get me wrong there are side quests or like missions where you're in a building where environment will get destroyed and whatnot i actually think that's a little cool but i have seen leaked footage of like of like you punching an enemy through a wall and like they're gone sent flying or you're getting sent flying into um a, a building or outside of the streets of of new york city i really think those are really cool ideas and again what frustrates me is that these ideas are kind of there in the game and they don't fucking have them bro I, it's really really annoying that these game that that this game has like leak uh, unfinished uh, ideas that everyone could get to see and we're all kind of like well why the fuck was this not in the game all right especially the double takedowns like it's kind of crazy to me that we almost had double takedowns 
and they're not in the game. Like, like that would have saved so much trouble when you was fighting the symbiotes. That would have been fucking awesome to have when fighting those symbiotes. Because those symbiotes take a lot to take down. So, I'm very disappointed on that front. And I guess my final gameplay critique would be the web swinging. Now, hold your horses. I actually love the web swinging. And I actually am the defender of the web wings. I actually think the web wings are fucking awesome. And again, like I said in my previous video, I really do enjoy that the game never forces you into using the web wings. Except for one side quest. Which is kind of a negative. But I, I won't even get into it. But, you know, I really enjoyed those web swinging and how the web swinging feels it's the best it's ever been and truly fucking like insomniac is like the king at this shit now like they are really doing some good shit but i just look at other spider-man games and i can clearly tell you know that those other spider-man games that had the same web swinging um style of traversal did certain things better or things that, you know, up to this day has not been implemented in the Spider-Man game. For instance, I'm glad that we finally have loop-de-loops in the game, but you can't infinitely do a loop-de-loop. -loop. And not only that, activating loop-de-loops is really fucking do so annoying. You have to be high enough from the ground and you gotta go into a dive and then you gotta make sure that after a particular um, angle of the loop-de-loop, -loop, you let go. If you let go too early, the game doesn't swing you back, which is what it used, what it would have done in the previous Spider-Man games. If you let go of the loop-de-loop -loop at a certain angle, uh, it will swing you back or swing you all the way up or propel you forward. This game doesn't fucking do that at all. And it's so fucking weird. It's like, what was the point of adding the loop de loop? You already have the super um the super jump and and uh spider dash. It was like it almost makes the loop de loop kind of useless. Uh you still can't swing over the top. Like, your angle of your webbing is still... Spider-Man will let go of his web at a particular angle. So you can't just hold on to the webs like in the previous Spider-Man game. You can't just hold on to the webs. At a certain point, Spider-Man will let go of the web himself. And I'm like, that's, a, that's some things that they, that they could have implemented. Um... But to me, to me, one of the, the the most craziest things about the web swinging, and it's not even the web swinging in particular, it's wall crawling. Once again, this is the second Spider-Man game or the third Spider-Man game from Insomniac that can't get wall crawling correct on certain surfaces. Try wall crawling on a on a on a surface that has like uh, certain different types of angles spider-man will just stop on his halts and you can't do anything and it's like really weird it's like very weird it's very inconsistent and it's just like bro half of the time you're just better off not even crawling on the walls and it's like really really annoying and we saw this back in the ps fucking one day so to see that it's a problem in a in a fucking uh, game from 2023 is wild to me that we still can't figure that sh we can't figure it out now. It's wild to me. It's fucking wild to me. Um, also, certain advanced techniques like like being able to slide down and like slide up a fucking building is still not here. Uh, being able to charge your your jump off of a wall and hop off of wall to wall, still not in the game. So again, there's a lot of still mechanics from previous Spider-Man games that Insomniac still has to take lessons from. And 
hopefully in Spider-Man 3, they will take those lessons. But for right now, I really enjoyed the, the web swinging. And it's this close to being perfect. Like, this fucking close. I can smell the perfection right there at the, at the web swinging. But it's just like certain things about it. It's just like, come on, man. Come on. Let's talk about costumes. Uh, costumes. I gotta be honest. I really, really and disappointed that we still have missing costumes from the previous game that was never given back to us like yes i do know at the time of this recording they did give us those god awful um new suits that was created by f celebrities made them if i'm not mistaken and then there were a few comic book ones uh and into the spider-verse ones that we got but overall, the costume selections have been really uh, hit or miss in the sense of one, how you unlock them, like the levels that you unlock them is like really wonky, but you don't know what you're getting at a certain level. And in the case of like Peter, some of his costumes is are like level 60, you get movie costumes. It's like, shouldn't those be like earlier unlocks? I don't know. It's just weird to me. But I'm just more upset that we're still missing costumes. We're still missing the fucking Scarlet Spider. Uh, Kane Scarlet Spider. We're still missing uh, Future Foundation suit. We're still missing uh, the black red and black suit like that particular suit that was given in the first game when you did all the black cat missions that suit is mission and i really like that one because it had fucking claws on it and i really really am missing some of those suits like some of those suits were some of my favorite so to see that they didn't make it back or we have no idea we're getting them as dlc or whatever it's really disheartening it's really annoying too because we could have really done with some of those suits. I also don't like that some of the suits don't have unique web wings. Especially like the black suit. It would have been cool. Wouldn't it have been fucking awesome if the black suit had like like actually like symbiote web wings? I think that would have been way more cooler than what the hell we got in the final game. And overall... As much as I really enjoy the costumes, like some of these costumes in the game, like generally had me jumping for joy when I saw them for the first time. And some of them are just look amazing. I'm just more disappointed of how we unlock costumes and how they how they look, but also a lot of wasted slots on original suits when they should have just been taken from the comics. I'm all for originality and trying to do something new with Spider-Man. But there's so he has so much iconic lores and and background that you know I felt like there could have been like ten other costumes that could have made it in than some of these ugly ass costumes that's in the game. And I guess the final thing I'll say regarding suits is how they handle the black suit. Now I love what they do in the story mode for black suit. And I think it's really cool what they do with it. And I just like thumbs up, Insomniac. You did great with that. However, I don't feel like they dig deep with the black suit in the sense of gameplay. Like a lot of the animations are still the same animations you would see uh, normal Peter would use. I was looking for more of like a web of shadows approach where it's like when you're in the black suit, your moves and your web swinging and everything is way more aggressive, way more like vengeful in a lot of ways. Uh, and I think that would have been really fucking awesome. Uh, I wouldn't even liked it if, like, if you fail to do a trick in the air and you get smacked on the floor, like the symbiote would actually save you. I, I think there's also should have been a moment where you just play as black suit Spider-Man. And your controls just start acting weird. And it's like you have a mind of your own. Like the game's just doing shit. 
but you have no control of it. Similar to like how the black suit is in the uh, in the comic books, where you know Peter would be asleep, and the black suit, the symbiote, would just use Peter's body and take him on joy rides and shit. And Peter would wake up and he's like, "God damn, why the fuck do I still feel tired, bro?" And that was fucking awesome. I really enjoyed that little aspect and to see that it wasn't preserved in this game i was like uh that sucks man especially in the comment section like this this cool takedowns and the only time you ever feel like you have the black suit is when you do like the rage uh attacks um the symbiote surgeon um attacks uh rage mode as i call it um that's the only time where I feel like, wow, the black suit feels different. I even think they should have had side quests that was exclusive to the black suit to show how far Peter's fallen. And it would have been even an awesome way to introduce um, Screwball again. But this time, Peter has doesn't give two flying fucks about um, Screwball. And then when he finally catches her, he beats the shit out of her like humiliating her uh and i think that's actually kind of fucking dope but they never really lean into it as of right now the black suit outside of story just feels like a costume and i wanted more i just wish there was more to it than that before i end the video i do have a bonus critique and this is just breaking news this is something that they just announced uh that we are getting the pc port to spider-man 2 and that's fine that's cool i'm really happy that we're getting the pc port for spider-man 2 i can i can complete my collection on my steam um however i have two big complaints the lack of communication uh, which is more of an insomniac complaint and no dlc slash real post launch support for spider-man 2 um and to start off with the lack of communication i kind of already figured we wasn't going to get dlc it was taking way too long but my greatest issue with insomniac is that they did not warn or keep us in the loop about anything that was going on you had tons of people the hardcore insomniac fans really begging and pleading and hoping that there was going to be some sort of dlc whether that be an expansion pack like similar to how they did with the city that never sleeps story or 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 do something on the lines of just DLC uh, costume packs like I think fans were at least looking for something like that and sadly and this really really bothered me they don't do that and they didn't talk to any of us about it and it's really just disappointing I, I just think that the communication could have been there uh, and I just the whole not having DLC, again, I'm not sitting here and saying that uh, we are entitled to DLC just because they did it for the first game. However, you know, I really enjoyed the City That Never Sleeps story, even though it had some few little problems. Um, I personally really enjoyed that DLC. Not only did it add new side quests, not only did it add new characters uh, and cool new enemy types that really push your shit in, uh, it was really a continuation of the story and gave us a, a, a natural evolution of Miles' character because at the end of that story, he's literally on his way to becoming Spider-Man. And it was really cool. And to see that we're not continuing it in any shape or form. We're not adding no new suits to the game. Not even saying a DLC pack with just new suits. We're not adding any story to the game. Which would have been way more 
cooler to just add more story to the game flesh out things that probably wasn't fleshing out um probably explain how we're gonna get venom back if we're even gonna get venom back um just stuff like that would have been so cool to explore but they just generally drop the ball by they saying there's no dlc anymore for this game i think looking back at the first game the first game had way more of a post-launch support and it was so cool that it did and people really loved it for that and to see that this game didn't do it in any shape or form a few returning costumes and basically new game plus that took seven months to come out yeah i i, I think you gotta call a spade a spade and just accept the fact that this is a rush title insomniac in particular sony not really insomniac rushed insomniac to get this game out and it's clearly showing i think not having any dlc support is a prime example of just the game being a rush product it's a misfire and i think insomniac fans need to accept that and embrace that because i see a lot of denial and a lot of like oh well i love the game so it's not really a problem like no i think you really need to sit down and just do what i did and just come to the conclusion that insomniac was rushed on spider-man 2. a lot of features are cut that shouldn't have been cut and there's a lot of things that shouldn't have been cut so overall i think my final words would be this as much as i love spider-man 2 i really stand by that it is my game of the year when it came out i enjoyed the game playing it again on new game plus was awesome however i think we all have to unanimously agree that this game was a rush product because of venom being kind of a one note character miles getting kind of shafted certain gameplay while was cool uh was lacking in certain areas uh the fucking uh side quests being hit or miss and just things that should have been in the game day one like new game plus um dlc slash post launch support more than just a few little costumes would have made spider-man 2 an amazing game but as it stands right now spider-man 2 while i love it it is a flawed title and i just think that the spider-man community in particular the insomniac community needs to fully embrace that and understand that this is a flawed game with that being said that's gonna do it for my video if you're new to the channel please comment rate subscribe all that fun stuff let me know what do you think of spider-man 2 um what is your critiques now that is the anniversary and what is some of your good slash favorite moments of spider-man 2 comment below let me know and as always more videos are on its way it's your boy, Mr. Generate, signing out. Have a good one, Web Warriors. And happy anniversary, Spider-Man 2.